Hello and welcome to Tradecraft Security Weekly. This is episode number 26. I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and this week I'm going to be talking to you about uh, using open source intelligence to discover contacts at an organization that you are about to attack. Uh, this is part two of a series where basically we're trying to gain some situational awareness prior to attacking an organization so we can be better aware of where the assets are that are ex externally exposed as well as uh, potential targets for, for other um, purposes that we'll discuss momentarily. So let's move right along. So first off, the last time I talked about external recon was episode eight of Tradecraft Security Weekly, which actually was over a year ago at this point. Um, and now, now that we talked about discovering hosts externally, you know, you, you can only do much, so much attacking, I guess, when it comes to to an external infrastructure. Now let's look at at, at finding some employees uh, of the actual organization um, from a recon perspective. Now, why would you want to do that? Well. First off, I mean, obviously, like if you're going to fish anybody in or, at an organization, you want to have a good list and know who actually works there and, and have something that you can use to uh, develop your ruses around. Um, secondly, the list of names that you're going to get from doing recon will be greatly, uh, uh, it'll be of great use later on when we look at doing password attacks against an organization. So if we look at doing like a password spray against an OA portal or if there's, um, I don't know, like a VPN portal that you might want to try to perform a password attack against, having that list of usernames is critical. And then lastly, we can learn about the various roles employees have in an organization too. So not only are we are we getting like a list of users, but we're also going to obtain information about the company and understand, you know, how many security people do they have? Do they have a SOC? Do they have, you know, a, a bunch of marketing people? Do they have a bunch of, you know, accounting people? That kind of thing. And kind of discover a little bit more information about the actual organization itself. So LinkedIn, obviously, is the biggest resource for finding employee info. Everyone puts everything on LinkedIn, right? If you work in an organization, it's like it's like the, uh, you know, the, the current day resume, right? Like everyone updates their LinkedIn. Um, and has pretty much all the information relevant to everything that they've done up until uh, the point in their career. Now, um, LinkedIn have actively been battling like the scraping of their site. So there have been a number of different tools that have had to be redeveloped and uh, modified over the years because <clears throat> LinkedIn's doing a really good job of stopping people from scraping their site. They just, they'll start banning the IP if they see you hitting their site too often. Um, there, there are a number of other tools, though, that, that have been developed around LinkedIn that will allow you to search it. And we'll get to those momentarily, but I mean, there's basically two different ideas of how you can go about searching LinkedIn. You can directly scrape LinkedIn and hope not to get banned, or you can use search engines. So things like Google and Bing ca actually cache some of the results of, of what is on LinkedIn. And the other big bonus about LinkedIn is employees will gladly tell you about all kinds of things. So if you're looking at understanding more about an organization, there's no better place than look start start looking at like job openings and LinkedIn because those will tell you a, a lot about what people are doing inside the organization. For example, I mean, I've been on assessments where I've had security people at an organization tell me exactly what firewalls they use, exactly what AVs they use, exactly what web proxy they use. So when we look at developing malware that we're gonna send to that organization, we, we can cater towards those things even better and try to get around them and evade, and evade them. Breach data. So many, many employee email addresses are gonna be found in a lot of the public breach dumps that are out there. Now this is, Obviously, not going to be like a uh, you know uh, a complete list of email addresses, but you know if if anyone at an organization has ever used their business email at a site like LinkedIn, at a site like um, I don't know any of the other big breaches, right? Um, then that data can can be found pretty pretty easily. So uh, one of the things that I I really like is hashes.org has a list of a lot of the, the the public leaks that are out there, and you can go download those. You can go download those leaks. So for example, um, the Have I Been Pwned list, uh, they they put out like um, eight hundred billion I think or eight hundred eight hundred million uh, no it's eight hundred million um, password or uh, uh, credential combinations and. You know, like you have that, you have like the LinkedIn dump. There's there's a ton of dumps out there. Um, you go search through those and you'll find a bunch of email addresses of contacts at that organization. I mean, some of them might not be there anymore, but you might get lucky. There's also um, public leak search engines. So things like Have I Been Pwned? And then there's also one that's called WeLeak Info and they have an API that you can, uh, you can connect to. 
Okay, so some tools for finding contacts in an organization. First off, Recon NG is one of the main ones we use all the time. Uh, and I have to, you know, talk about the Bing LinkedIn cache module because this is this one is the, I, I would say it's my primary method of finding a lot of contacts. There are a little bit of, uh, there, there are some bugs here and there that it pulls in some some data that's not really useful at times, but uh, it's, it's a very useful tool overall. Uh, the Harvester is another tool that's really great for finding uh, LinkedIn users via Google results. So, um, the, you know, Recon NG, Bing LinkedIn modules using Bing search engine. The Harvester is using Google search engine. LinkedIn is a LinkedIn with a T on the end is a tool from Vi, uh, Vincent, Vincent U, uh, Vi Security. And uh, that one scrapes LinkedIn directly. It also searches Hunter.io, which is a uh, basically a search engine for email addresses. And then there's also InSpy, um, which scrapes LinkedIn directly. Okay, so tool demo. Let's jump into that. All right, Ooh, too far, there we go. Okay, so the first one I'm gonna show is Recon NG. So Recon NG is pretty straightforward. Um, whenever, you, whenever you're working with Recon NG, always make sure you create a workspace so you're not just operating in like the default workspace. So like I'll add one for BHIS, right? And it, you'll see, like it'll tell you, like I don't have a bunch of the API keys in here currently, um, but I do have the one necessary for the Bing LinkedIn cache uh, module, which what you can do is you can go to, to Azure's website and then sign up for the, um, uh, the Bing search API there. And you get like, I think it's like $200 of uh, free credit up front. Uh, but this one technically does cost money whenever you run it, depending on how much, how many search results you get back. Um, but you do get, you do get a, a bit of a free trial there. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to add companies and I'll go ahead and throw in Black Hills information security. Okay. And now um, we're going to go ahead and load the Bing LinkedIn cache module. So the cool thing about Recon G2 is you can, you don't have to type out the full module name. Um, like it'll search and actually find things. So like I technically could have written like load Bing underscore L and it would have found it. Um, okay. So you have a couple options with, with this module. Um, for, for purposes of demo here, I'm just going to set the subdomains to the US. So we're only searching uh, us.linkedin.com. And let's go ahead and run this. Let me make this a little bigger so we can kind of see the whole thing here. All right, run. And now this should connect to Bing's API and start harvesting uh, basically, you know, the cached versions of LinkedIn's, of the LinkedIn profiles that Bing is aware of. And um, it'll for 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 our company, like it gets a lot of examples that are not people who actually work at our company, but um, there are a lot of uh, actual employees here as well. So you can see, like it, it total, it got 197 contacts. And then in Recon NG, you can do the show contacts uh, command to basically list out all of the uh, the ones that have found. So there's the Recon NG uh, Bing LinkedIn cache module, right? All right, let's exit out of that. I'm going to next show you the harvester. So the harvester um, is pretty straightforward. You can just run Python the harvester.py. Um, for the the company you want to search for, you can basically just throw it in quotes. Like for example, we'll do Black Hills again. And there are a number of different modules uh, that the harvester has. For the the LinkedIn one, it's just dash b LinkedIn, and then we'll run that. And it should do a similar thing. This one's searching Google at this point for for the different uh, employee names. So same thing, right? Like we we now have a bunch uh, more contacts we can add to our list of users that we'll have for this company. All right. Now the last one I'm going to show you is LinkedIn. Okay. So LinkedIn, same thing. Let's just all you basically do is run python linkedin.py and it will start to query you for the various things that you want to search for. So um, for this example, let's just, let's go with Microsoft because for some reason this one doesn't bring back uh, many results for Black Hills for me. Um, so what we'll do is we'll enter a text file name for it to output to ms.txt. Um, we're not going to filter on company ID because I actually don't know the company ID for Microsoft at this point. And then um, 
we'll enter the, the domain of Microsoft.com so it can mangle some email addresses together and we'll let it do an auto search. So the first thing it does, you can see it uh, checks hunter.io um, to determine the best prefix and it determined that first.last was the best prefix for this one. And then it starts finding uh, employees on LinkedIn. So a lot of these are Microsoft people. Um, and here, I'll, I'll go ahead and stop it for a second and then I will cat the out for you so you can kind of see the output at least. So yeah, you can see like it's a CSV of the employee names and the job title, all that stuff. So that's that's a couple tools at least you can you can use for um, for the recon purposes of finding external employees. All right, back to the slides. So uh, there are some other recon and G modules that are pretty useful too for this. Uh, I like to look at the the who is uh, point of contact. So um, the domain slash contacts who is underscore POCs, POCS is, uh, is a module that basically will go and search various net blocks and ranges, um, or it'll search the, uh, search for the company name that you've put in and that, and that, uh, when you, when you add companies and find any Aaron who is, uh, results that have point of contact data. So, you know, somebody who might've like left their email as like an abuse number. Um, then there's also a PGP search. So, uh, you know, a lot of organizations actually, have people that use PGP and they their keys are available on um, MIT's public PGP key server uh, for, for their email address. So you can search for those as well and get some, some of their contact information. Uh, GitHub Miner finds, uh, it enumerates various repositories, repositories and member profiles from GitHub directly. So a couple other ways you can get more, uh, more um, contacts. All right, the last thing is if a lot, like a lot of that isn't working for you or if, um, for, for example, like you're having trouble with LinkedIn searches, um, Carrie, who uh, used to work for Black Hills, now works for Walmart, wrote a BERT plugin um, for scraping Google search results. And uh, it's basically like you, you would install this BERT plugin and manually kind of click through the results in Google and the BERT plugin will throw all those into a nice list for you. So that's it for the blue team. Um, I, I always recommend doing the same recon that an attacker is going to do about your own organization. You know, try to figure out like what lists can be developed uh, based off of just open source uh, intelligence, and then also um, discover you know who has creds already available uh, in public breach dumps. You know, like if, if somebody's creds are being reused to access your organization, that's a very bad day. And I've also thrown a, a few other resources in here. So um, there's a GitHub repo called Awesome OSINT that has a, it's a huge list of various tools and uh, different things that are really great for open source intelligence. Um, there, there's a really good blog post here on basically just kind of similar stuff we're talking about here, external attack infrastructure, um, and trying to discover contacts in an organization. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Tradecraft Security Weekly, and I will catch you next week. If, uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I am at DapTac on Twitter. You guys have a great week, and uh, see you next week.